my Corona Diary, so this is now day number two. Like I said before, I'm not sure if I'll be sharing this publicly, um, but I'm going to keep documenting my family's journey. So, we are on day number two for my personal diary. Um, let's just address this. Do apologise, um, I'm not feeling well. If you haven't seen in a previous video, I do have a water infection, I'm not well at all. I'm going from having a raging temperature to shivering. And so anyway, today I thought I'd get some fresh air, which is gonna be a mission. Um, but I've managed to put on some very quick makeup, as you can see, and I've not got as far as doing my hair yet. So it looks a mess, so please, Please do ignore the state of me. So anyway, each day I'll be making notes of things that are happening. There's a lot going on within every 24 hours in the United Kingdom right now. So I am in the southeast of the UK, if you didn't already know. Um, as far as we know, London is the worst hit in the UK currently, um, followed by the South East along with Scotland. So Scotland and the South East have similar um, confirmed case numbers right now. So yesterday I was explaining that my daughter was sent home from school with suspected symptoms. Um, that meant that my isolation started early. Um, because I'm in the vulnerable category, which was going to have to self-isolate for 12 weeks as of the weekend. So all that meant realistically was it had to come forward. Um, so if you didn't already know, I'm a mother of five. I have five beautiful children and an amazing partner who I'm separated from at the moment, which is horrendous. So the aim every day is for me to make a, a note, I suppose, of what my family is encountering, how well people are, and what's happening with the news. So we're going to start out by talking about my daughter. So my daughter was sent home yesterday. Um, she's displaying symptoms, not necessarily completely typical of... Um, the virus but obviously it's going to show different in different people so um she was sent home she had medicine last night and she had an early night it coincidentally started when a period started too so she could well have been a bit run down um and become a little bit poorly because of the wrong time in the month and the stress of what's happening for us as a family. So, yeah, there's that worry. Um, we're not convinced that she does have it, but there's no knowing for certain without the testing. Um, and she seems to be better this morning than she was last night, which is great. So, you know, that's a really good thing. Um my youngest who's had a chest infection has now got some antibiotics so he's doing well um i will have mentioned and i know this isn't corona related but some of you may want to know i have a water infection which i've now got antibiotics for and so far i've not noticed much of a difference but you have to give these things time so anyway, moving on, there is more updates. Um, these videos, when I put them up, I'm not sure whether they're going to go up daily and I'll just upload them in the morning if I'm going to put them public. Um, or I'll string it all together as a weekly vlog. But if they do go up on a daily basis, they're not going to be for that specific day. Please know that they're either going to be from the day before or possibly even the day before that, depending on how we go unless the first one I put two or three together until we've caught up. So, yeah, um, so let's just kick on with the news. So yesterday's news, um, we were told that there was 14 more deaths in the United Kingdom, totalling 71. 
which is quite frightening. Um, we heard that the government was putting into place some measures for businesses. Now, I don't completely understand all of that because that doesn't affect us. So um, I'm sure if you looked into things, you'd be able to figure that out unless you, you know, and perhaps you already understand. So also the NHS, which in the UK is the National Health Service. It's the free health service that the UK provides to um, all residents um, and they do an amazing job they have postponed all routine surgery from the 15th of april for a three month period so anything that's not essential surgery is going to be cancelled and that's something i think realistically i expected to happen and i don't really see that that's um, unfair i really do feel that that's something the nhs will have needed to do to relieve some of the pressures um, it's not great for some patients and I'm sure it's going to upset a lot of people um, but hopefully when I make this statement there aren't going to be people that will be feeling that they've been cancelled and they didn't feel that um, they were a non you know they were not part of that category even though they've been cancelled so I'm hoping that the NHS managed to get you know the boundaries right with it and cancels all of the right ones. I mean, my daughter was um, in the process of being referred for some um, surgery and there was illness in the house, so she couldn't go for her consultant appointment a couple of weeks ago. As it turns out, she wouldn't have been put forward for surgery anyway, so um, that hasn't made a difference to her. It's about a toe that she's going to need an operation on to have a pin put in to straighten it up. Um, so obviously that's something that ultimately can wait because it means they can help save lives so yeah so uh the emergency they have put an emergency law for police and immigration to be able to detain people in isolation so for anyone that's i suppose resisting isolation they now have the powers with this emergency law to detain people once again that's as much as I know. Some of the news I'm going to be going over in this video, just so that I can look back on, I won't know the ins and outs of. Um, I won't be able to enlighten on that. I'm just merely jotting notes as I see notifications from Sky News. And we have to remember that I have mental health problems and too much um, news tends to make me very very anxious so I am kind of paying attention but at a bit of a distance so that I have an idea of what's going on and I'm not oblivious but there comes a point where I have to be able to switch off because it's not going to be doing me any favours. Um, also I noticed late last night they were saying that criminal trials due to last longer than three days will be put on hold so bigger cases are going to be put on hold. I would assume that's because bigger cases generally mean that the person is already um, in prison being detained, which means that um, the bigger cases, they're not, you know, this virus and the isolation is not going to last longer than what a sentence would. So they're judging it that sort of way. So, yeah, um, that is the news for the last 24 hours. Today, I've already made start with jotting the notes from today, which will be in the video I record tomorrow. Whether you see it tomorrow or the day after, I'm not really sure, but um, if I share it at all. So yeah, that's what's going on. So in terms of how we're coping today, it's okay. We now have everybody at home because obviously my daughter was sent home yesterday. Honestly, for me, how I'm coping, I... I found it very difficult. I've been a bit tearful and upset. Um, it's not been easy being distanced from everybody. Um, probably harder than I expected. And um, I think the trouble is, is because I'm not feeling well. I'm struggling with being close to people. And then when you're seeing other people being ill, naturally as a mother, you tend to your children and... To see them being ill via a you know phone service like um, FaceTime, and you can't be there to put your arms around them or tell them everything's going to be okay is 
really difficult. I mean, thankfully, we do have FaceTime and I am able to tell them via the phones. So, you know, it could be worse, I suppose. So, um, one of my children, the youngest one with a chest infection, he was sad last night because he missed me. And naturally, he's poorly, so he's going to want me, which was, um, you know, hard to take. Um, so yeah, it's been a little bit upsetting. Um, I think when we all get used to the idea, it'll, you know, it's never going to be amazing, but we will get used to it and how we're going to deal with things. So already going to the toilet is a mission. Um, I am on the top floor of a three floor house and on this level, there is two bedrooms, this one and one other. In between the two rooms, there is a bathroom. That's the only bathroom we have. We have a to separate toilet downstairs, but there's no bath or shower in that room. So the bath is in the room next to me, which means that everybody, although they're using the toilet downstairs, they will need to use the bathroom next to me. So it's a bit like run the gauntlet when I want the toilet. I have to open my bedroom door very, you know, gingerly and assess the situation and if there's no one around I have to get to that bathroom as quick as I can and shut the door and lock it so even that you know as the day goes on you think nothing of it it's, it's not a difficult you know it's not an it's not a difficult task to perform but when you're doing it constantly it can grind you down to start with so yeah there's that and of course for me to be able to get fresh air I can't go to a public place and I need to keep a safe distance when I'm outside but I've got to leave my house safely too because obviously there's another six people in my house that I've got to get past without getting too close to just in case. You know, my partner's still having to go out and get medicines and food so he's mixing with the public and my children, two of them are ill. You know, we can't confirm that they don't have it so we've got to be extremely careful. So that's where we're at. That's my experience so far. I'm sure things will become less upsetting as time goes by. And yeah, that's today's update. So let me know of any strategies you have, if you have any, if you're watching this. Because once again, I say I don't know who I'm going to share this with, if anybody at all. It may just be for me to look back on. So take care of yourselves. Be safe. See you tomorrow.